This tutorial will show you how to create an online scavenger hunt using Microsoft Word. I've already done my pre-work, which means I've already opened up Microsoft Word. I've already decided on the questions that I wanted to ask my students, and I've already selected the websites where my students will link to to help get the answers. When you are selecting your websites, you want to make sure that they are sites that are grade appropriate for your students sites that do not have a lot of advertisement on it, and also make sure that they're sites that students are able to get to under their login. So for example, if you're choosing to use a YouTube video, students will not be able to access that YouTube video under the student login. Um, I'm ready to begin, so I have my Word document open, and now I'm going to bring up my internet browser. I've already done my pre-work so I know which sites I want to use and I have a tab open for each site that I want to use. Now to make this easier I'm going to have my windows tiled side by side. So here is my internet browser window. I'm going to click on this middle icon which means to restore down. I'm going to drag it over to the left side and it pops it to the left side of my screen. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my Word document. I'm going to restore down, drag that window to the right side, and now I have my internet browser on one side and my Word document on the other, which makes it real easy for me to work with. This is the site that I'm going to use for my first question, so my students will actually scroll down to locate the information to answer this question. So to put my hyperlink, I'm going to click and get my flashing cursor underneath my question. Notice how I did leave some spacing underneath each question. This allows me uh, room to put my hyperlink and then it also allows me room if I want to keep this as a Word document for my students to type their answers. So again, I have clicked at the bottom to put my flashing cursor. I'm going to come up to the top and click on insert and then I'm going to go to the links area drop that arrow down and do hyperlink. In this box right here where it says text to display, I am going to type in China and I'm going to say that this is using National Geographic Kids. I'm going to come over and right click and make a copy of that URL that that goes directly to the article in National Geographic that I want to use. I'm going to come down here to address and I'm going to clear this out just to make sure I have the correct one and I'm going to right click and paste. I'm going to click OK and now I have my first hyperlink to National Geographic Kids to this article where they will be able to find the answers to this question. I would follow the same procedure here for describe what the flag of China looks like, but for this time I'm going to use this site, Enchanted Learning, and it has all the information needed. So again, this is the URL that links directly to that site. So I would put my flashing cursor where I want it to be, insert, links, hyperlink, I would put display the text, so for this one I would put Oops. China's flag and this was used in Enchanted Learning. I would go and make a copy of that URL that goes directly to that part of Enchanted Learning. I'm going to come here and I'm just going to remove this. I'm not sure, just to make sure I get the right one. I'm going to right click and do paste and click OK. Now I would continue to do the same thing for numbers three, four, and five, but I do want to share a few things with you. For number three, I've chosen to use a Brain Pop video. This is the website that goes directly, that Brain Pop, and it goes directly to the activity dealing with the Great Wall of China. Now your students will have to log in to Brain Pop to be able to access this video, and I've said you will need to log in to Brain Pop. If you do not have the information to log into BrainPop, I'm going to add all of the resource logins in the resource section of our Blackboard class. So your students would be able to click on the hyperlink, 
they will be prompted to log in and they will be able to watch the video and you would insert your hyperlink. This is the direct hyperlink. You can see right here at the end it says Great Wall of China. It is a Brain Pop link. It will link you directly to this Brain Pop video. For number four, I've given my students a little more direction. This site I'm using for uh, the Emperor of China, and it has a lot of information on it. So I'm giving my students a little more direction, telling them you will need to scroll down on the page when you open this link to locate the history section, and you'll be able to view a video. That way, when my students click on the link, they know they've got to scroll all the way down till they see the history section, and they could get the information, and they could watch the video. Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about this one because I've chosen to use a discovery education video for this one. I'm going to share a tip with you where students do not have to log in to discovery education to watch the video. However, as a teacher, you will need a Discovery Education account. If you do not have a Discovery Education account, I will also add that information to the resources section of the class. So here I am into Discovery Ed and I am already logged in. So for this one, I'm going to look for a video clip on the Chinese New Year. I could even select my grade level and I'm going to do submit. Here's a little short video clip, one minute and 40 seconds, about celebrating the Chinese New Year. I'm going to click to open it. When I am looking at the viewer window to view this video, if I right click and I go to output, this is the direct URL right here that leads my students to that video and they will not have to log in to Discovery yet. So all I would have to do is right click and highlight this URL and then come over to my Word document and do insert hyperlink and create it that way. So now let's say that my online um, scavenger hunt is finished. I could choose to do it a couple of ways. If I choose to leave it as a Word document, that means that my students would be able to open the links by either holding down the control key and clicking to get to the websites, or they could right click and open the hyperlink. At that time, if they wanted to type their answers on the Word document, they could actually just click underneath the hyperlink and get their flashing cursor and type their answer. Some of you may decide to save yours as a PDF. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I save mine as a PDF, I do File, Save As. I browse where I want to save my document. I'm going to just save it to the desktop. Right now, it is a Word document. So I'm going to drop this down and save it as a PDF file. And I'm going to click Save. The difference with seeing it as a PDF, now it's going to open as a PDF. I'm just going to skip this for now. And sorry about that. Let's see if I can open. Great. There we go. Sorry about that. Now it's opened up as a PDF. When it's saved as a PDF, all the students have to do at that time is just to click on the hyperlink and it opens up the website. So you can decide what is best for your students to save it as a Word document or to save it as a PDF. Once you have saved it, then you can add this to the templates drives for your students to have access to and they'll be able to complete the online scavenger hunt from the end computing stations. That concludes this video on creating an online scavenger hunt using Microsoft Word.